at SCNL working on these issues and how are we going to take action in 2015 with the new Congress? Sure. So this has been in the news a lot lately, not just now, but over the summer as well. I think people were really shocked in Ferguson, Missouri over the summer when after the tragic death of Michael Brown, um, there was a lot of protests that rose up because of that. Um, and the police response was just such an overreaction. And they came in literally with guns blazing, with weapons of war, with vehicles that are designed to withstand landmines, um, things that are just not appropriate for law enforcement. And it got a lot of people talking and really concerned and confused about why police have these things. Um, and that's something that FCNL has actually been working on for about a year now. We've been trying to draw attention to the Department of Defense's 1033 program, okay. which allows uh, DOD to transfer weapons of war to local police at no charge. Um, and they've transferred more than $5 billion worth of equipment, it's something that's really tragic and really scary, and it's one of the symptoms of, of a larger mentality of war. And war certainly does not belong here at home, in the U.S., in the streets. Um, and so that's what we've been trying to work against. It, tying it in with the grand jury decisions, I think there's a couple of distinctions to be made. Um, neither Eric Garner nor Mike Brown died at the hands of a militarized police force. They died just by... Um, general law enforcement weapons and so that's a distinction we want to make because there's so many larger issues here of right. um, injustice and there are race issues and there's all kinds of tensions that are there but the militarization piece comes in because that relationship between community and the police is so fraught with with tension um, and mistrust largely because they have become so militarized mm -hmm. and there's a fear uh, that the community feels they they don't see the police as so you know they Andy Griffith with like a name badge and a blue shirt right, it's it's, yeah. it's suddenly police have riot gear on and um so what we're trying to do is as one step part of a larger movement to heal the relationship between the community and the police we were trying to demilitarize them mm, that's great so um can you tell us more like is that something that's actually possible um you know people see that not a lot's happening in Washington. Um, do you, how does this issue give you hope? Do you see things moving on Capitol Hill? Right, so we've been supporting the Stop Militarizing Law Enforcement, which was introduced by Hank Johnson of Georgia, a Democrat, Raul Labrador, Republican of Idaho, uh, which is very exciting to have bipartisan movement on this yeah, right definitely. off the bat. Um, it also has been introduced on the Senate side um, by Senator Coburn and uh, Rand Paul, who's joined on to it. So it's a very bipartisan effort. And currently on the House side, it has 50 co-sponsors, which is really amazing in terms of uh, what Washington is doing or not doing right now. Um, so to have that much movement on something is really encouraging. They've held a couple of hearings on it. This is an issue that they just were not talking about before Ferguson. Uh, when FCNL started working on this about a year ago, we were met with a lot of kind of confused faces. Like, mm -hmm. what is that, 1033? What are the numbers for? I don't know what that is. Um, and suddenly now it's a really, it's a household name and it's something that people know about. I think so the fact that that awareness is happening and it's generating protest around the country of people feeling victimized and people feeling that the police are not there to protect them, that sort of same energy is channeling into Congress. What I would say to young people who are interested in these issues is that for us as lobbyists, it's almost pointless for us to work on anything if there isn't already constituent movement on it. Right. Um, so if members of Congress are hearing from constituents and energy on a certain issue, that's when the time is sort of right for us to come in and make legislative change. And I really do think that time is now because people have so organically sprung up across the country. Great.